Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you a Q&A and I wanted to start doing more um, personal type YouTube videos like workouts are great and stuff but I feel like you guys don't really know who I am as a person and it is hard to display like exactly who you are through social media you know just posting workout videos or pictures so I really want to get more like personal and familiar with you guys so when you see me I'm not just a photo or a video I'm actually a person and I'm someone behind you know the camera so I'm gonna start doing like uh, weekly Q&A's and like just chats and like just talking about life in general I haven't exactly decided the name I'm thinking maybe something like chats with a V but I'm not entirely sure so if you have any suggestions on what I should call this series of like Q&A's talking you name it let me know so I yesterday on my Instagram I asked you guys questions and I got a skew of questions so I'm gonna try to go through as many as I can um, there is a lot so I probably won't answer them all but I'll, I can always space it out into a second video so I'm gonna do that all right so let's get started here all right First question, how do you keep your teeth so white and shiny? Well, thank you. I'm glad that you think they're white and shiny. They're actually not. It's just right now I have the right, like the wing, um, the ring light on and a lot of times I take photos in natural sunlight so it obviously enhances the brightness. But I do use um, 3D Crest white toothpaste and I also get my teeth checked and cleaned every six months at the dentist. So those cleanings definitely do help. So that is question number one. All right, question number, okay. I do great with my workouts, but I really struggle with my diet. Any tips from your experience? Okay, so workout, yeah, getting the workouts in is amazing, but when it comes to seeing results, the diet is gonna be number one priority. I think one thing that people make, which is a big common mistake, is that when they start dieting, or like think, uh, think about going on a diet, they kind of restrict everything or cut everything out that they think is bad. And I think then you end up with a situation where you really miss out on those things and you fall off very quickly. So in terms of diet, don't cut everything out. I think balance is huge. Just like, you know, reduce the amount you're eating of certain things. So if every day you're eating a bag of chips, you know, try to put a, um, chips in a bowl and start small. So don't completely eliminate everything. Just make things smaller portions or have better portion control. And also trial and error. Find out what you like because you're more likely to stick with a diet which you genuinely enjoy. You find it's easy to follow. It works with your lifestyle. So trial and error. Kind of play around with what works for you. Dieting. You name it. Are you related to Mia Melkova? So I don't actually know who Mia Melkova is but Apparently it's a porn star, um, I was told, so I am not related to her, and if you know who she is, then I don't even know if she looks like me, but I, I'm not related to her in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> Ways to overcome gym anxiety. So I remember, like, I, we have our own gym here in London, so I don't really get anxious going to the gym, but I do get anxious going to certain gyms when I'm traveling, so the biggest thing is just, I, I think personally for me, is to kind of... Um, figure out the gym, like where things are located. If I kind of see the environment and know kind of where things are, I feel a lot more confident knowing where I'm going. Music is a big thing. I like to put my music in. It kind of lets me zone out. Another thing I like to point out is that most people who are in the gym don't actually really notice you. Um, so when you go in there, you're overthinking things and you're thinking that everyone's looking at you. You think maybe your form's not right. You don't look good or what maybe the anxiety is stemming from. But most of the time you go in there and people don't even actually know that you're there. A lot of times they're focused on their own thing. So I think a lot of times how you're projecting how the environment is and what you're feeling like is a lot of times more in your head than what is actually going on around you. So I like to just, you know, take a deep breath. Remember that like we're all at the gym to better ourselves and if there are those kind of people who are judging you for what you're doing then those aren't the kind of people you want to be around anyways and their opinion likely does not even matter because we're all there to do the same thing so I think we should all be happy that we're all in the same environment and keep a positive environment also getting to know the gym and the members around you um, can create make the environment seem less intimidating because then you go in there and you see a lot of familiar faces the gym starts to feel like more like a family environment and that anxiety is definitely going to be reduced and also so consistently going more and more you're gonna let that anxiety um, get lower and lower because each time you go you're gonna you know feel a lot more comfortable so that would be kind of my tips in terms of gym anxiety and I know what it feels like it can be very intimidating to go to the gym but you just got to get there and I swear to god it is gonna be so much better than you think and you're anticipating it's gonna be 
how do you tackle weight gain side effects from antidepressants? So I'm on antidepressants, which I've been very vocal and open about. So I take an SSRI. I don't think the particular brand is important just because um, I've tried numerous um, types and I think you need to work with your doctor to find one that works for you. In terms of the side effects, the side effects are going to be different for everyone. For me personally, I didn't notice a weight gain in terms of my antidepressant. If anything, I lost weight because I had better control of managing my anxiety. I was less depressed. I had, depressed. I had more motivation to be able to be active, move, work out, you name it. So I think in terms of the side effects, it is very individual. And if you're finding that you have a lot of side effects from one particular kind, I would highly suggest asking your doctor or seeking out your psychiatrist, whoever you're working with, whatever med medical professional, and see if there's a different um, medication or different alternative to what you're using because it, you don't, if that's a side effect that's causing you even more stress than what the medic medicine's doing for you, then obviously it's not ideal and you wanna get that sorted out. Can you do a full day of eating? Yes. So I will do a full day of eating. I actually have done one. If you like scroll through my YouTube, I do. I had one, I think I did one like two months ago. I eat very intuitively, so my days definitely do change on a regular, but um, I did do one and I can do another one soon. I just haven't had a chance to like get a whole day of eating. I'm actually gonna order a new vlog camera off Amazon because the one I have right now is a Sony A7 and it's very large and awkward to like maneuver and use in terms of like a vlogging type style camera. So I'm ordering one off Amazon so I will have no more excuses to get that for you guys. How often should you look at the scale? So I guess it depends on what your goals are in terms of your fitness journey. Uh, the scale can be useful, a useful tool, but a lot of the times the scale doesn't show the entire picture. And I think if you're gauging progress photos, your best, especially as a woman, you're best to take photos as opposed to using the scale. And you wanna make sure, let's say you are, I don't know, dieting for something maybe once a week. If you start using the scale every day, I think that can become a very unhealthy fixation um, with the weight and with the numbers. And again, as a woman, our bodies are constantly fluctuating different times of the month you name it so I would be very cautious on how much you're using the scale especially as a woman because I think a lot of times um, we have this unhealthy yeah. persona to do with the scale and the weights and numbers and we base a lot of our self-worth or can base a lot of our self-worth on this you know minute thing so I think it's important to just gauge your progress by how you're feeling how your energy is how your workouts are, are you getting stronger how do you feel when you look in the mirror how your clothes fitting and photos and I would um, use the scale less secret of your smile braces that was my secret I had braces for two years in grade 11 and it was not very fun but I am now happy with my teeth and my smile so that is a plus of that what are some things that have helped you through your depression and anxiety? So I would say therapy is like one of the number one things that I've utilized to help me cope and manage my anxiety and depression. I've been seeing a therapist basically since I was 18. I'm 26 now because I'm sure one of you guys are going to ask me how old I am. So I'm 26. And so for the course of that time, I have been regularly seeing a therapist from 18 to about 25, no, 24, I think was when I stopped seeing my doctor I saw a psychiatrist that was based out of the University of Western Ontario because that was the school I was going to and then after that I actually had to kind of find a new therapist and so I the last two years I've been seeing a different therapist and then I now just got into seeing another psychiatrist the wait lines for that can be quite long so anyways long story short therapy has been a major tool in helping me cope with my anxiety depression obviously medication has been a huge um, help and has helped me be able to function on my you know in a daily life situations um, other things is exercise I think exercise is very powerful and a tool that you should definitely implement mindfulness I like to listen to Eli Bay he has um, online you have to you have to purchase them they're not very expensive but I do like his a lot there's also a lot of different apps for mindfulness so that's another thing I would definitely utilize I like to read and do things that make me feel good so not always reading self-help books but like a lot of times I like to just read like you know fiction and just have fun with books and stuff and I also like to eat properly I find a huge difference when I'm eating properly and I'm sleeping properly if I don't get enough sleep I'm very anxious the next day or I find my mental health isn't as good so sleep is very important for me it keeps me regular and consistent and also I like to eat properly I feel a lot better when I eat properly so I think with you know finding mechanisms to help you through anxiety and depression is, is again very individual um, I know a lot of people utilize CBD oils and have huge benefits with that um, and there's a lot of natural supplements that can help with that deep breathing exercises you name it but my number 
I'd say my number one and second would be my therapy that I've done. I've done CPT therapy, I've done EDMR, I've done talk therapy. Um, I've kind of done like majority of them that you would, I guess, do through therapy sessions, depending on what your psychiatrist or what your um, therapist recommends. And also medication. I've been on medication since I was 18 off and on. And if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw last year that I did get off my medication and I did suffer a lot with you know my anxiety my depression and my mental health did deteriorate quite a bit to the point where I wasn't functioning at even 10% of what I am now so that would be probably the other thing that's extremely helpful in, in terms of for me if you are seeking out medication make sure you go through a medical professional I can talk about my opinion on it but I have no credentials in offering you know actual medical professional advice and I just like to put that disclaimer out there because I'm just sharing my personal experience have you ever had eating disorders due to depression and anxiety? So I've never been diagnosed with an eating disorder. I definitely think when I competed, I struggled with disordered eating. I would be binging um, a lot. I would, you know, have a very unhealthy relationship with food. I don't think I would ever have per se an actual diagnosis from a psychiatrist, but the way I was eating was definitely not healthy. I think if you are struggling with an eating disorder, you need to reach out for a professional help because it's likely not gonna go it's not going to get better on its own. It's the same as like, and you know, your anxiety and depression, those things don't usually resolve on their own. So I think if you are struggling with, you know, eating disorders or if they're stemming off, you know, being anxious or depressed, a lot of the times they are co correlated, I would definitely seek medical advice and get that sorted out because I know how damaging and how hard that can be. So just know that there are a lot of resources out there and I would utilize them and make sure that you are, you know, being proactive with that and, and focusing on that. How long did it take you to feel better with meds? Okay, so all the meds are different um, in terms, and you again, everyone's very individual. So I'd, I'd say I start feeling them two to three weeks, like I start feeling better and more like myself. And then I'd say the full effect, six to eight weeks to really like get the full benefit of it. If you notice that you're starting to feel worse, like two to three weeks into the drugs, I'm sure your doctor and psychiatrist will tell you this, but it's very important to go all back. Right, my camera choose. definitely turned off because I don't have space on my memory card, so I'm gonna try to like remember where I was in the last question. So I, what I was saying is that if you start feeling worse from your antidepressants, then obviously this is something you need to bring up to your doctor right away and make sure that they're you know helping you with a different form of medication or coping or whatever you name it, uh, treatment plan. So that is obviously something that they will bring up to you because I am again just giving you my personal experience. I don't have any medical credentials to be giving you any actual advice, but I'm just sharing you kind of my own story. So, all right, that's that. Something you're insecure about. So I would say that like I feel like my, I don't have as many insecurities as I used to have. I feel like I did take a lot of time to really self-reflect and focus on really what was important, why I have these insecurities, where they stem from, and really just like break them down and kind of see is this insecurity even something that I should be insecure about. So I used to be very insecure about my cellulite and I had like um, butt dimples and stuff. And that was something I used to feel very insecure about and very like hyper-focused on. And you know, once I started following accounts that really normalize cellulite and I really, you know, research more women and pretty much, you know, 99% of us have cellulite, I realized like, and kind of just saw where this like insecurity stemmed from and really broke it down. I realized like how, you know, silly it is to be so hyper-focused and so obsessive with one little thing, one little imperfection that you have within your body and how at the end of the day, it really doesn't make any difference. I mean, it doesn't make you any less beautiful, doesn't make you any less smart, doesn't make you any less of who you are. So I think just knowing those things definitely helped. I know I used to feel insecure about not being pretty enough and or not having nice stiff body or just very like, you know, superficial things. And it's like, those are, a, they're very subjective, and at the end of the day, they don't make me any less of a person of who I am. If you don't like what you see, but you don't really get to know who I am underneath the exterior, I think that's just sad because who we are as a person is underneath all of that. It's great to look beautiful. It's great to have, you know, be in shape and whatnot, but if you aren't working on the person you are underneath, none of that really matters, and you won't even really enjoy that. So I think in terms of insecurities, it's really just working through them on your own. And obviously I have bad image, bad body image days. I have bad days, we all do. I'm a woman, I still struggle, um, but I make sure to, you know, I unfollow accounts that don't make me feel good about myself. I only follow people who, you know, lift me up, give me a positive like view of 
of the world and of their message and whatever they're doing, genuine, real people. I don't follow people who bring me down anymore. And I think that's a big thing is if you're constantly following accounts that like make you feel really shitty about yourself, unfollow them. If I'm somebody who makes you feel shitty about yourself, unfollow me. Like it, you have to protect yourself and protect your own energy. And if, if the person you're following isn't adding value to your life, unfollow them. So yeah. And you're, you're going to have your days. We all have our days. It's just, it's, it's life. And just like with any anxiety, depression, mental health issues, you have your days, you have your good days, your bad days. And life is a journey. It's a roller coaster of ups and downs. So just take it day for day and, you know, work on those coping mechanisms that you're learning, work on that, those, how to think differently, the strategies you work. If you're in therapy and you're learning strategies on how to analyze your thoughts and change your thought patterns, just work on those things. So I found your video, your clothing video is really helpful, leggings and jeans. Okay, I'm definitely gonna do another one of those soon. I just have to figure out what it is gonna be on. So if you have any suggestions, put them down there and I will be sure to try to do one for you. Okay, so I kinda, someone just asked, how do you cope with body image issues? I feel like I kinda just answered that in the last question. So I don't think I'll reiterate that one, but um, basically kinda just the stuff I said. Anxiety, depression, journey, and medication slash treatment. I feel like I sort of went into this. So I was, I started having anxiety and panic attacks at the age of 10. Basically, it was all performance based. So it happened when I was swimming and racing or like something that traumatic happened. So for example, my brother broke his arm. It was very traumatic for me at the time. And I had a full blown um, anxiety attack at that time. But at that point, I didn't really necessarily have the anxiety, like the, the constant anxiety with it. So it was more considered like a panic disorder. So it wasn't until I was 18 um, that I actually was diagnosed with depression in my first year at university is when things for me really went downhill. Um, I became very depressed. I, at the time, I didn't really understand what I was feeling. I mean, I had felt sad and depressed throughout high school, but I didn't actually know what it was. But this was something completely different to the point that I didn't want to continue on with my life. And I didn't really, I was just in so much pain and suffering. I didn't know how to. So this is when I reached out to my mom, you know, and she kind of explained what was going on. And I ended up seeing a psychiatrist at West. Western University, so the West, the university I was going to at the time, which I kind of already mentioned, and this is when I started, you know, getting therapy for my depression. I started medication for my depression. I was able to get myself out of that black hole, and at that time, I was diagnosed with having like major depressive disorder and also having a generalized anxiety disorder. So those are the two things that I was um, diagnosed with, with through a psychiatrist. So yeah, that is kind of my story in terms of medication. I've been off and on medication basically since I was 18, majority on. I've had sometimes where I wanted to see if I can do it myself without the um, use of medical intervention, but I have never been able to completely be okay with that. And anytime I have got off my medication, even if I've done it very slow and weaned off very, 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 very slowly, I have really, really struggled. So in terms of me being able to live my best life, medication is what I need. Therapy is what I need. It is what it is. It's my own journey. It's what I need to do to be a better version of myself. Okay, so what did you change to lean out? So last year was a shit show for me in terms of my health. I, in February, I got a laser cone biopsy of my cervix, which basically, it's a lot of information. Basically, I had to get, um, I had precancer cells that had to be lasered off and I had to get a cone sized biopsy of my cervix to make sure that things were progressing. I've had, um, get precancer cells there for the last three years and they had just kept getting worse and worse and worse so they needed to do this procedure to kind of burn all those precancer cells off to make sure they don't turn into cancer um, after this I wasn't allowed to train for about a month because you're not allowed to do any like impact movement I could do like walking and stuff this also happened in February where the weather really hits me hard so I couldn't use exercise as you know a mechanism to deal with my depression so with you know seasonal depression and not being able to work out and just like feeling really shitty about myself, I started really slipping into a depressed state, anxiety, and it kind of just after that things just kind of like es like you know spiraled out of control for me. I wasn't on my medication at this point, so I wasn't having that help. I was really trying to utilize CBD oils and natural things, getting my hormones tested. I really, really, really wanted to do it the natural way, but I was letting myself further and further slip into this dark hole of no return, and I, I was still just too like stubborn and too proud to let myself get back on medication. I started getting these like really bad bloating flare-ups and I would be holding a lot of water. My body was constantly inflamed because anytime I would feel a little bit of anxiety, I would kind of like swell up because I just had no way to manage the anxiety. 
So I thought, you know, maybe it was like food related. I thought it was maybe hormone related. I did Dutch tests to get all my hormones tested. Things were a little off, but nothing like out of the blue kind of thing. Just, you know, your typical woman. Um, I did, um, I, I did trial and error with my diet. I tried a low FODMAP diet. I tried cutting and restricting a lot of different things to see if those were the things that were triggering my digestive issues. Nothing really managed to help. And my bloating and my anxiety and everything just kind of got worse and worse and worse. And then in about June, I believe I went back to the doctor. I got back on medication and I was finally myself again, able to function, able to deal with life, deal with my anxiety, deal with, you know, being able to be me again. And, um, ever since then, you know, I stopped having those, those crazy bloat flare ups. I was, I lost a lot of the inflammation I was holding and my body kind of just responded back to normal. So I think in terms of why I was heavier and holding, you know, water and inflamed was just because I was so stressed and I had no way of helping myself manage that anxiety. And I was also, you know, depressed. I was in, I probably, I wasn't eating terribly, but I definitely wasn't eating as good as, as I could. I definitely wasn't working out the same way I am now just because I didn't have the energy I had. And a lot of times I, I would train and I would get so bloated afterwards. So I stopped even wanting to work out. So I, I wouldn't say I really necessarily changed anything in particular besides the fact that I went back on my medication, which just allowed my life to get back in order, which allowed me to, I guess, lean out. But I didn't do anything per se. So when people ask me that question, I don't really know how to answer it because I don't really know for my myself. You and Regan always seem perfect. Do you guys ever have relationship struggles? If you are following anyone on Instagram, you probably think the relationship is perfect. I'm here to tell you that no one on Instagram, I don't care who they say they are, the relationship is not perfect. We are human beings. We all have our own shit. We all struggle. We're not always going to see eye to eye and no, nothing is exactly how it seems on social media. So of course, maybe you think that our relationship's perfect and I mean, I love a relationship, but it's definitely not perfect. We have things that we have to constantly work through. Um, we've had struggles in the past and we are just two humans who are, you know, in it with each other and we're on this journey as one and it's definitely going to be challenging as we continue on and once we have kids and other, you know, stressors and elements are thrown in. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that our relationship's perfect. I mean, I love our relationship, but it's definitely far from perfect. And yes, we definitely had our, our fair share of struggles. I don't say we norm we don't really fight a lot, but I mean, we've definitely had our moments. <laughs> so no, no relationship is perfect. I don't care who they say they are. What is better on weight loss, BCAs or protein? Um, ideally for weight loss, you're gonna need to be, you know, doing proper amount of training. Your diet's gotta be, you know, okay. I mean, you can add supplementation into it, but I would, I would really focus on getting things right in the kitchen first, and then you can add supplementations on after. So I'm gonna say neither nor. I'd say, obviously, if you're not getting a lot of protein in through your diet, you might wanna start supplementing with a protein product to ensure that you're getting your protein in. But other than that, um, I would say start in the kitchen, get your food right, and then you can add in some supplements. How did you know that Regan was the one? Did you have any doubts? No, I wouldn't say I had any doubts. I mean, I definitely have a bit of a skewed perception of marriage and definitely have some underlining issues in terms of relationships based on my parents' divorce. It kind of scarred me and I did have to, you know, go through therapy to work through that myself. But in terms of the one, I feel like you just know. I mean, things just click. It, I don't want to be with anyone else. He's the person that, you know, I love. And I just, I was like, he's the one that I want to share this life with. So I feel like if you are genuinely happy with that person, you see a future with that person, you don't need to overanalyze everything else. And, and you kind of just, it's a feeling. I don't really know how to explain it, but it's definitely more of a feeling than a thing you can rationally think about. But if the person makes you feel good, you're in love with the person and you are excited to genuinely take on this world with them, I think that's a pretty good sign. What is the one thing that helps you stay motivated through depression and anxiety flare-up? Oh, honestly, it's, when I'm super depressed, I don't feel motivated at all. So I'm not gonna lie and say I do. Um, that is when I utilize therapy and I make sure I'm going regularly to see a therapist or now I have a psychiatrist, yay, so I can go see them. But I would say that, no, I don't really have motivation. I think that's when it comes down to really focusing on the tools that you've been given and, you know, utilizing the resources you have and you know what some days it's okay to not feel okay like you're not always gonna feel freaking fantastic it's like we have our shitty days and that's fine it's like if you have your shitty days you have your shitty days it is what it is all right have you always been fit 
oh my goodness my body i like when people ask like a starting point like i if you've been following me through the years you know my body is like i've been like every shape size body you can really think about in terms of like for my own build so i've been a lot of different sizes in terms of fit athletic capacity yes i've always been fit i've grown up as an athlete you know i was as of like when I can remember like being three and four, I was playing outside. We had a trampoline, we had a swimming pool. We built an, a skating rink in our backyard. We're outside, we were very active kids. I was never really in front of a TV or computer games unless it was like educational. So I did spend most of my childhood being athletic and then swimming, skating. And then I got into competitive swimming at around nine. And then I was basically, you know, training two hours a day. Up in, and then when I was about 18, I was training five hours a day. I also did cross country, I did track, I did some cheerleading here and there, some, you know, rec league soccer. So I've always been active in terms of sports. I've always loved being able to push myself physically and that's just something I've always thrived off. So I would say in terms of athletic ability, I've always been fit. Maybe not, I've never, maybe not always looked fit in terms of if you visually see me, but in terms of actually what defines fitness, I would say yes. Uh, I'm a beginner working out. What undies do you wear under your leggings? My favorite undies are the seamless ones from Victoria's Secret or pink. I think they're actually pink. One of the two. But they have no seams, so they're great. That's that's like my go-tos. I have so many pairs of those. And my favorite ones are the nude or the black or the pink. So seamless, seamless, seamless thongs. That is where you are going to have your best bet. Someone said... You never reply, why, why bother? Actually, I reply to like 95% of, you know, my comments. I do try to reply to a lot of my DMs. Sometimes I just don't mentally have it in me to reply. And that's something I have to work through. If they're creepy men sliding into the DMs, hell no, I'm not replying to you. So if you are a creepy man, that's probably why I did not reply. You guys are asking a lot of like what I normally eat in a day, so I definitely am going to have to film a Q&A because, or sorry, um, a day in the life eating because I, I can't really like answer that right now. Hi, I just started using Tula Skin Cleanser and love it. Oh, so good. Yeah, so I use pretty much everything Tula. My go-to products are definitely the cleansers, the two different cleansers. Um, I love their um, moisturizer. They also have that like kefir, I think I'm pronouncing it right, repair hydration. Um, you leave it on and it kind of soaks in and then you rub off the excess after 10 minutes. I'll put a picture here because I can't remember exactly the name. Um, you can use it on your face. I also use it on my body. It's, it's fantastic, especially in the winter or like when you come back, excuse me, from like a hot climate to a cold climate, great. I use the under eye stuff. I use like any of the illuminating serums. I love the exfoliating mask. I use that once a week and it's it's perfect for travelers. I use the dual the, the dual pad um cleaner. I'm going to just put a link for all this stuff cuz I normally have like my products to show, but honestly, you can't go wrong with any of their products. I've tried them all. I love them all. Everyone I know who uses their stuff loves it, and you can also save 20% using my name, so take advantage of that. What advice do you want to give to someone wanting to be a full-time influencer? Um, so in, influencing your, your is hmm, my full advice. Okay. So the one thing I'd say is to be you. It's really easy to get caught up in like how you want to portray yourself online. And it's just you want to be who you are because that's what people are going to be attracted to. And you're going to attract the right people based on who you are. So you know what? You might not have millions and millions of followers, but you are still you know, you're still influencing and having a positive impact on the people who you genuinely connect with. And I think that's so much more important than just, you know, posting what you want just to attract millions of followers. I think I think the message and the connection is really what is going to set you apart and genuinely being who you are because you can be anyone, but no one else can really be you. Like, that's, that's your power. You are you and you're different. And I think that's just, you know, you know, obviously you want your content to look good. Consistency is huge. You want to make sure you're putting out con content consistently. You're sharing a good message. You want to make sure that you're adding value to someone's life. So if you're just constantly posting a photo, not having really any caption, not that no one's really taking away from it, there's less likely a chance people are going to follow you because they're not really taking anything from this. And that that's another thing. So consistency. What's your message? Be you, and um, enjoy it. Have fun. I mean, don't get you know, be hard on yourself. Just take it for what it is and have fun with it. All right, so I definitely run out of time to make this video even interesting. So I haven't even remotely answered like 
even half the questions so there's so many more so thank you guys so much for asking me all these questions i'm definitely gonna do another video to answer the other half of them but i hope i answered the ones you guys saw at least to the best of my ability i hope you enjoy and if you have any suggestions on what i should name this series i so far i'm thinking chats with v but i don't entirely know so if you have any suggestions let me know thank you guys so much for watching and yeah stay tuned for the next video bye Thank you.